closer, please. Closer. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 scariest horror movies. Here's Johnny! <laughs> Never, ever, ever under any circumstances say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. For this list, we'll be focusing on more traditional, darker examples of the genre. Which horror movie scares you the most? Be sure to sound off in the comments below. All right, let's get spooked. Number 20, Sinister. Before helming Doctor Strange, director Scott Derrickson's experience with the supernatural skewed in favor of the spooky stuff. And the crowning achievement of his horror filmography is without a doubt Sinister. Bagul, the eater of children. <laughs> Did you say eater? Yes, uh, uh, of children. The story centers on a true crime writer played by Ethan Hawke, who moves his family into a home that once played host to a series of grisly murders. His hope is that this mysterious crime can serve as the basis of his next book. If an image was destroyed, then the gateway would be closed and Bagul would no longer have access to this world, right? Mr. Oswald, what kind of book are you writing? Exactly. The film is not afraid to embrace haunted house cliches, but Derrickson's mastery over them is such that even when you can see a scare coming, it never fails to hit the mark. Employing elements of found footage to excellent effect, Sinister will make you steer clear of the attic. I made a mistake. I should have never come to this house. Number 19, Paranormal Activity. I would see the, um, you should call it like the, like just this mass, like the shadowy, just figure that would be at the foot of my bed. Told using video camera footage, this supernatural horror combined everything that made the Blair Witch Project and the Amityville horror classics of the genre. The specter doing the haunting is a demon that feeds off of negative energy and has latched itself onto Katie. It seems to me that that's what we're dealing with, something that's basically connected to you. In Paranormal Activity, we get to see the psychological damage that prolonged exposure to pure evil wreaks on an ordinary couple. The found footage style makes it feel believable, while also incorporating numerous jump scares. But it's the moments of quiet and static that allow the sudden action to scare us to our bones. Number 18, The Witch. For anyone who feels tired of the same old horror movie tropes, The Witch is a welcome change. It was a witch. No, it was a witch, Mercy. You speak her right. Thomason! It was I. Liar! The feature film debut of writer-director Robert Eggers, this period piece is a reminder that there are a lot of different ways to scare an audience. Mother and father will find out. What? That you are a witch! Set in the 17th century, the witch follows a Puritan family trying to scrape out a living on their New England farm. When the youngest child Samuel suddenly disappears near the woods, however, the fervently religious family is torn apart by suspicion, bad luck, and it would seem supernatural influence. Thomas, take the children outside. What does this to me? What does this? You'll find few jump scares in The Witch. The film takes a slow burn approach that instead gets under your skin using atmosphere, paranoia, and an unrelenting sense of dread. What's that like to live deliciously? Number 17, The Blair Witch Project. The woods around Halloween time is a creepy enough phenomenon. I don't, think, I don't want to go about... cheesy. I want to really avoid any cheese. One of the most successful indie flicks ever, The Blair Witch Project's marketing campaign made it the most talked about movie in the US. The fact that the teasers and trailer wet audience appetites while giving away virtually nothing about the plot made the found footage flicks twists and turns all the more shocking. <laughs> Its unknown stars allowed us to empathize completely, which made those surprises even more terrifying. To cap it all off, the simple yet horrifying closing seconds ensured that this film was one of the scariest of all time. <coughs> Number 16, The Silence of the Lambs. This movie is one of only a handful of horror films to ever make a serious impact at the Academy Awards. Its handling of themes such as gender identity have made it the subject of much retrospective criticism. But it's not Buffalo Bill's motivations that make this film so terrifying. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver 
with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. At its heart, The Silence of the Lambs is a story about the abduction and murder of female victims, crimes that feel all too real and terrifying. Now he places the lotion in the basket. <gasps> Please. <gasps> Please. <laughs> Jodie Foster's performance as FBI trainee Clarice Starling was career-defining. And who can ever forget the way Anthony Hopkins inhabited the role of Dr. Hannibal Lecter? He manages to make the former psychologist and cannibal charming, magnetic, manipulative, and ultimately one of the scariest characters in cinema. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Number 15, 28 Days Later. Hello! One of the films that helped kick off the zombie wave of the 2000s, 28 Days Later still holds up. Though many people have had their fill of these brain-eating monsters, 28 Days Later stands apart from the pack. These zombies are cut from a different cloth. The film centers on a young man who awakens from a coma to find that Great Britain has collapsed in the face of a highly contagious viral outbreak. And you do not need to get bitten to contract it. The infected in this film feel like creatures of limitless energy, rabid and animalistic in the way they attack. <laughs> Filmmaker Danny Boyle makes good use of confined spaces, chaotic camera work, and the human capacity for evil to anxiety-inducing effect. What do nine men do except wait to die themselves? I moved us from the blockade, I set the radio broadcasting, and I promised them women. Number 14, Insidious. Written by Lee Whannell and directed by James Wan, the same team behind the Saw franchise, Insidious is in many ways your classic haunted house story. Don't. It doesn't reinvent the wheel, but it's a very, very solid reminder that tried and true scare tactics still work wonders when properly executed. After moving into a new home, the Lambert family soon finds themselves plagued by supernatural forces. Dalton, the eldest son, who fell into a coma after going into the attic, seems to be at the center of the activity. What makes Insidious so scary is its relentlessness. What? The scares are fast and frequent, but rather than giving audiences a genuine break, the filmmakers use mounting dread and discomfort as the movie's baseline tone. Number 13, Rosemary's Baby. Rosemary and her husband Guy have moved into a new home and are trying to conceive a baby. But that is where the resemblance to a typical story ends. We have to make a baby. Oh, well, well, we'll do it. The unfortunate Rosemary soon finds herself the focus of occultists and their malevolent plans for her child-to-be. The idea of a demonic child growing inside you is blood-curdling enough. But the sense of helplessness is ramped up when Rosemary seeks aid, only to have her fears dismissed as paranoia and delusion. Because if you say anything more about witches or witchcraft, we're going to be forced to take you to a mental hospital. A memorable performance from Mia Farrow puts the audience right in her shoes. You will never look at your neighbors the same way again after this film. What have you done to it? What have you done to its eyes? Number 12, The Conjuring. We don't know what's going on or what to do. Can you help us? Yes, we can. While both Insidious and Saw are remarkable films, most would agree that filmmaker James Wan's greatest contribution to horror is The Conjuring. <laughs> the film centers on paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren, who are hired by the Perrin family when they begin experiencing strange and unexplainable events in their Rhode Island home. Set in the 1970s and inspired by the supposedly true story of the Amityville horror, the film feels like a throwback to classic haunted films of decades past. The scares are solid from start to finish, but it's the performances of this impressive ensemble cast that make the film so effective. You really care about these characters, and that makes every supernatural threat much more visceral. She won't let her leave the house. Why? What do you mean? If we take her out, the witch will kill her. Number 11, The Thing. Just four years after Halloween, John Carpenter made another classic, though no one knew it at the time. I don't know what the hell's in there, 
It's weird and pissed off, whatever it is. The thing was poorly received upon its release and barely broke even. Over the years, however, it's been subject to one of the most drastic critical re-evaluations in the history of horror. The practical effects used to bring the titular monster to life stand up to this day, and still represent some of the most grotesque but inspired creature designs to ever grace the screen. The gross bodily manipulation was simply too much for viewers back in the 1980s, but this uniquely terrifying vision would go on to influence a generation of horror filmmakers. Number 10. The Ring What would you do if your son had seven days until he dies in horrendous fashion? So you know when I'm going to die? And what if your son's fate was inexorably tied to your fate? No! These are the questions that this remake of the 1998 Japanese film attempts to answer in the most unnerving way possible. Fueled by amazing sound design and a gripping score, every moment of the ring will have you recoiling in terror. No need for loads of gore here. With just lots of disturbing visuals, the use of psychological horror, and a haunting vibe, it's no wonder the movie was both a critical and commercial smash. <laughs> Number 9. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre hey, You see those buildings there? That's where they kill them. Gritty and foreboding in every scene, this slasher flick revels in the violence and gore that it throws at its audience. When a group of friends decides to pick up a hitchhiker on their way to a family homestead, they have no way of knowing just how horrible their world is about to become. Here's the short version. Awaiting them with open arms and empty stomachs near their destination is a family of cannibals who use the bones of their victims to furnish their home. Among the most wantonly violent films ever made to this day, if this massacre doesn't chill you to your very core, we don't know what will. Sally, I hear something. Stop! Stop! <laughs> Number 8. The Omen On this night, Mr. Thorne, God has given you a son. In this Richard Donner film, the suspected Antichrist is not in the womb or a crib, but comes in the form of a young and at times innocent-looking child. Prepared to destroy anyone who stands in his way or displeases him, Damien is surrounded by grief, misery, and death. Look at me, Damien! It's all for you! Fraught with violent visuals like decapitations and hangings, the omen doesn't pull any punches as it delves into the life of the world's most evil little boy. Damien! Damien! No, no, no! Incredible suspense and excellent performances, notably from Gregory Peck, make this movie one of the best horror films of all time. He bears a birthmark, a sequence of sixes. So says the Bible to all the apostles of Satan. Number 7. A Nightmare on Elm Street It was the worst nightmare I ever had. You wouldn't believe it. Matter of fact, I had a bad dream last night myself. It's a simple fact of life. We all have to sleep. And, try as we might, we are incapable of staying awake forever. Please, God. This is God. That's why the idea that a horribly disfigured man could literally kill you in your dreams is such a creepy prospect. <laughs> After he was burned alive by parents whose children he'd killed, Freddy Krueger managed to stave off the hell he deserved. Nancy, uh, help me please. Save me from Freddy. While later chapters in the franchise devolve into over-the-top humor, the first film from director Wes Craven is played so seriously that we suggest you do not watch it before bed. Number 6. Hereditary In 2018, cinema-goers were introduced to a new master of horror, filmmaker Ari Aster. No! Oh it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. An unrelentingly bleak and deeply disturbing film, Hereditary pushes the boundaries of the genre in ways that, quite frankly, we didn't know were possible. It immediately drew comparisons to such highly influential pictures as Rosemary's Baby and The Exorcist. The film doesn't bother with jump scares. It instead shocks with genuinely unexpected and deeply disturbing imagery, from which it refuses to turn away. 
The tension and overwhelming sense of dread are so pervasive that some viewers may not last long enough to see the mystery unraveled, further bolstered by stellar performances all around. Hereditary isn't just a scary movie, it will shake you to your core. Number 5. The Shining If there's one horror film that beats out The Thing in terms of critical reassessments, it's this one. Directed by Stanley Kubrick, The Shining is undeniably unconventional. Come and play with us, Stanley. It's a lonely, ambiguous, and thoroughly unsettling experience that, while arguably a tale of the supernatural, is fundamentally about one man's descent into madness. Well, the most terrible nightmare I ever had. <laughs> It's a significant departure from the source material written by Stephen King, but a study published in 2004 conducted by King's College London actually labeled it, quote, the perfect scary movie. Give me the bat. Stop it! <laughs> Give me the bat. The Shining never fails to terrify, but the answer as to what exactly makes it so scary remains elusive. From set design to the imagery used, The Shining is artful in its approach to inducing fear. Here's Johnny! <laughs> Number 4. Psycho We know what you're thinking. How does this film crack the top five when, relative to the horror movies released in years since, it's so tame? Oh, we have 12 vacancies. 12 cabins, 12 vacancies. The thing is, while Psycho may start off slowly enough, the conclusion that it builds to is incredibly effective. Its ability to scare has been undermined by its own success. Many people already know the story. <laughs> But show it to someone with no knowledge of the plot and their reaction will be genuine terror. And the initial lack of horror makes the sudden violence and twisted reveals all the more powerful. No one will argue against the fact that Psycho is one of the greatest horror films ever made, but it also remains one of the scariest. Number 3. Alien Despite the science fiction elements of the story, there can be little debate that Alien is in fact also a horror film. Being stuck inside a claustrophobic environment you can't escape with a mindless creature that only wants to kill you is a creepy idea to be sure. Heck, even just sitting down to enjoy a meal together in this movie becomes a complete nightmare. That chestburster scene is forever burned into all our memories. Ridley Scott's space adventure doesn't only grab you by the neck, but also never lets you go again. It inspired a worthy follow-up with Aliens, as well as a slew of lesser sequels and prequels. But the original remains the creepiest and most shocking. <laughs> Number 2. Halloween Michael? John Carpenter's seminal slasher flick may not have invented the genre, but it provided a framework that would be replicated for decades to come. And yet, the 1978 film's ability to pack a punch has not been diluted in the slightest by the countless imitators that followed, including its own many subpar sequels. In making this film, Carpenter really found the perfect recipe. Michael Myers, armed with his now iconic mask and imposing physique, makes quite the impression. His commitment to silence adds an extra layer of tension, while Jamie Lee Curtis's breakout performance makes us feel extremely invested. Her fear becomes our fear. Musical cues can make or break a horror film, and the score for Halloween consistently intensifies the scares. <laughs> Scared yet? I know I am. And I've actually seen a surprising number of these, so I can confirm that number one is super scary. But of course, you already knew that. So let's sneak our way through the honorable mentions, and then we'll name our top scariest horror movie. The Grudge, a chilling ghost story full of creepy kills. <laughs> Candyman, as haunting as it is gory. Allow me at least a kiss. Just one exquisite. Yes. Get Out – Horror as Social Critique huh. 
The Strangers, a home invasion slasher inspired by real events. The Descent, claustrophobic, fresh, and absolutely terrifying. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Exorcist You're gonna die up there. Demonic children get us every time. The Exorcist introduces us to Reagan, a friendly 12-year-old girl who becomes possessed by a demon after playing with a Ouija board. Captain Howdy, do you think my mom's pretty? A terrific and refreshing concept for a horror film was taken to the next level by William Peter Blatty's exceptional screenplay and the amazing direction of William Friedkin. <laughs> Unflinching and truly scary. This is what we'll always imagine an actual possession would actually look like. It forces us to picture how helpless we'd feel if ever this happened to a loved one. Add to that horrifying moments like when Pazuzu tells Father Damien Karras about his mother's fate in hell. This is as scary as scary gets, and undoubtedly a horror classic. With the Father and the Holy Spirit, Damien! <laughs> Amen. The thing about The Exorcist is that it's scary on so many different levels, even real life. Like they said, the set was cursed. So, which horror movie scares you the most? Be sure to let us know which one and why in the comments, or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton, or on my YouTube channel. See ya!